Perfect. So, hi, Paulina. It's great to have you on the show. Hi, and welcome. Um, sorry, thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. I'm such a huge fan of your podcast, so it's great to be on this side of the microphone as well. Oh, that's great. And um, yeah, you've been a great supporter, I know, since I launched the podcast. So that's wonderful. And it's great to have you actually on this side because I know you've got a lot of value to share and particularly around copywriting, which is such a core skill for entrepreneurs to have, yet it's something that trips a lot of people up um, because they, they're not, just not quite sure how to turn their ideas into something that's interesting to read and to be consistent with that. So I am going to grill you all about that. But first, I would like to know how you started your business in the first place. Yes, so like I, I have a background in journalism and I come from Finland where I worked as journalist mainly in magazines for, well, for quite a while. And then when I followed my then boyfriend, now husband to Switzerland, it was clear that it won't be that easy to transform that career abroad when I couldn't work on my using my native native language. So I was looking at my options back then and I ended up working in a communications agency, which was also a great experience because it allowed me to see that the other side of the communication work, because as journalists, you're often bombarded by these uh, press releases and this piece of information from the agencies. But it was great to see that side as well. And I really loved working one-to-one -one with clients and all that all that but like so many mothers after my maternity leave I really didn't see myself going back to the agency agency job and I was I started asking myself if there would be a more flexible way maybe a little bit of a gentler way to be both a mom and a professional ambitious woman at the same time and that's when I started working on my own so there actually especially in the beginning I I did both things that I had been doing since then so I did some freelance freelancing as a journalist and I also worked as a copywriter for some smaller businesses and I started also working a lot a lot more on the strategy side of things because when I worked with small businesses especially I realized that even though they have a lot of ideas and they have a burning passion to what they are doing they don't necessarily know so much of the communication strategy content strategy and how to get them themselves and their message out there more consistently so that you can really reach reach your dream clients and get your message across to them to those people who need and deserve to hear that so yeah in a nutshell that's how i turned from from full-time journalist to part-time journalist and then to working almost exclusively with small businesses and startups yeah and i think that's a a, a journey that so many women are going to relate to particularly um those who are in, in an expat world themselves, that often to, to follow your husband, you do have to give up everything you've built previously. And very often that doesn't, doesn't car carry you or in, into your new um, culture. And when you try to get a job doing what you were doing before with the language difference, the culture difference, just figuring out how to get a job in the first place and who you would like to work for, is a really tough process. So I think for a lot of expat women, um, that's how I got started as well is to, to to have your own business is just gives you so much flexibility um to to own your own time to do what you really love and to do it your way as well so that's that's great that you've managed to translate your skills into a business and succeed at doing that and I love your strap line can you can you tell us that helping small businesses with mighty missions is that yes exactly I love that so much <laughs> Because it's so true. Most businesses have started because they have a cause or a passion or something that they want to change in the world. But getting that across and engaging people in that idea is actually really difficult. It's not so easy to do, particularly when it's something that you're passionate about. You don't always come across it as clearly as you need to be. So how do you, how you start translating um because this is something i hear all the time is what i ask people what do you do and that oh it's complicated <laughs> so how do you start translating a, a big mighty mission that may come and feel a bit complicated into something that's really engaging for people 
Yeah, well, it's often quite a process because when we work on our own business, we are so close to it and we know it really inside and out. So it can be even hard to explain it to somebody who doesn't know it that well. And it can take take time to get there. So if, if there's somebody listening who is just right at that point that you described and feels overwhelmed, it's normal. It can feel a bit overwhelming in the, in the beginning. But what often helps is to take a step back Mm. And look at look look at all of that a little bit through the lenses or through the eyes of someone 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 else. Like one good good um, good strategy is to try to explain your business for a five year old or for a ten year old. I actually do that myself sometimes when I realize that I'm too caught up by all the fancy words like strategy or mission. And it doesn't mean that you need to downplay yourself or use over simplistic language, but try to explain it it to somebody who doesn't know your 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 area so well. And sometimes it can help to do that like really in real life to ask somebody who you know and who you trust, but who doesn't know exactly the ins and outs of your particular business and practice it with them. It can be it can be a, an eye-opening exercise actually, because then they can ask questions like, oh I, I don't understand what that is. Yeah. And That's especially, amazing. sorry, <laughs> if you're working on the written content, what often works is to speak it out loud. Because when you, we write things, we try to sound fancy and we use complicated structures. And we love using those verbs with ing at the end when they are writing stuff down. But when you're speaking, you usually use shorter sentences. You just said, I help entrepreneurs build their communication strategy so that they can do what they love. And try to speak it out loud to somebody somebody and see and or even record yourself if that helps you yeah I, I used to do that and when you read it out loud you realize you, where you you trip up and where things really sound quite clumsy and you would never actually say that to exactly anybody. and it just feels so weird tripping off your tongue you're like oh no I need to change that um yeah it's a great tip to keep for keeping it simple and I love the idea of explaining it to to someone who doesn't know about the subject or a child um I always used to say, explain it to an intelligent 10 year old. And I'm, I've got two, well, not two 10 year olds, but one 10 year old and one 12 year old at home. And I quite often do that. And my 10 year old will just tell you straight, no, I don't get it. That's a load of rubbish. Huh? What? What are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so that's the beauty of, of telling it to a child is they, they will tell you, they won't try and be nice. Other people will try and tell you what they think you want to hear sometimes, but, but a 10 year old, definitely not they'll tell you as it is <laughs> exactly so when it comes to writing great copy it's often um uh, my experience was often that people would leave it to the last minute and say oh we need something on this and just chuck something out there um but obviously that doesn't really work it's not the ideal way to do things what's your advice what do you feel is the best way for a company to uh, or a business owner to to share their mission um, well, I think here really consistency is key. So where I see many, many companies and many, uh, many people to, to struggle is that sometimes it's so easy to create content when you're on a flow and do it once a month and you get all excited and you want to try new things, but it's hard to keep it up in the long run mm -hmm. and for your audience to really find out about you and to engage with you and for you to build that like know and trust factor that you need in order to sell it takes time and they need to see you consistently over different media that you're using you telling the maybe slightly different messages that you're sharing but it has to be consistent both in terms of message you have to be saying more or less the same thing over and over again it might sound to you like you're a program record but for somebody who is on the other side and doesn't know you that well, it only helps them to realize that, oh yeah, this is that person, oh, this is her thing, oh, this is, this is what, what she's, she's advancing. So it's very important to be very clear about that, but also to be able to share that content in a regular way. And in order to be share that content, you need to be able to create that content in a regular way. And here is where my approach is sometimes a little bit old school or boring, if you want, if you want to use that word, because I don't believe in tricks and I don't believe in those magic bullets that will change the course of your business overnight. I believe in do, doing hard and smart work, but uh, regularly. So, so typically, if you're struggling with getting that message, 
message across. Uh, I would first of all in, advise you to focus on your process to make sure that your content planning process is regular, that you are brainstorming and noting down your ideas regularly. Because often we get a lot of ideas uh, when we are doing something else and we don't necessarily have the time right back right then and there to work on that content. But write those ideas down and collect them all in one place and then have a regular meeting with yourself or with your team if you have one to really brainstorm ideas and to focus on how you are going to write about them or create videos about them or whatever it is that you are that that is that you are doing so really that regularity in planning is the first step it is often a little bit hard to get started it is hard to make that habit stick like any any new habit basically if you want to quit smoking or start eating more vegetables it takes time so be gentle with yourself but try really try try to get strive for that regularity and strive for having that process in place first of all i think that's great advice because yeah if you're just putting stuff out there you may be adding value for your audience but if you're not building that consistency and you're not building to something you're not taking them on a journey that you've consciously designed for them it's not necessarily going to help you or your audience to uh, achieve what they want to. So having that, taking that time to plan and to to build that consistency of message is is really key. And I love that you brought out or highlighted the fact that you need to repeat your core message over and over and over and over again, because you never know what's happened in their world since you put out your last blog post or your last email or video or whatever it may be. And their world is so Oh, I remember I start, first started training in communications like 12 years ago and there I was saying you know, people are overwhelmed with, with messages and that's just amplified now because back in those days social media was still quite wasn't being used to the extent it is today and the channels hadn't quite exploded in the same way either so now we are just like really bombarded so people won't remember what you told them before or who you are so and I really that really frustrates me when I have an email and someone talks away and it's like but who are you? What, why are you telling me this? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So just repeating that at the beginning could be really powerful. And even if, if they remember, oh, yes, Paulina Rassi, the, the uh, copywriter for small businesses with mighty missions, they'll feel good that they remembered. It won't feel that you, you're making them feel stupid in any way at all. Exactly. And I think yeah, that's happy. Yeah. Yeah, to recognize that. Um, back when I work, worked in magazine, actually, I had an editor in chief who did once a brilliant exercise. She took all the magazines we had created over the year and she turned them the cover side down. And then she asked, okay, how many uh, titles or headlines from those covers do you remember? And we were the team, we had created those and still we didn't remember each of them. So you can think of, think of that if you're, if you're afraid that your audience is getting bored with your content. They don't remember everything. Thing. even you won't remember everything after after one year or one month so it can it was an eye-opening exercise for me to realize that yeah for for the readers or for the audience they uh, they have so much so much else going on in their lives that they don't have time to memorize every bit, bit of information you put out there yeah exactly it's all about the repetition and and that can be a good thing because it also means that we can repeat content <laughs> that's true um, and your audience will be Will, will have changed, they would have moved on, they'll take something fresh from it, there'll be new people joining, there will be people that have forgotten, that, oh yes, I remember that tip, um, I read it before and decided I was going to do something but didn't, maybe not this time I'll take action, you know, there, there's, there's you, you can definitely double up on your content for sure. So when it comes to um, planning your blog, your, your content, not necessarily just your blogs, but um, how do you begin with that? As you said, it's, it's, I, I, I learned a while ago, we do two things. We do what we love and we do what we're being watched on. And when you're a business owner, it was really tough because there's some things that we do that we do 100% love, but things like planning for a lot of entrepreneurs doesn't fall into that category and you're on your own. There is no one like watching you saying, have you done that plan yet? Are you putting it into action? <laughs> How would you encourage people to get started with that? Exactly. Yeah, it, it can be it can be a little bit hard hard in the beginning, but uh, when when you have um, have that planning process in place, well, first of all, try to make it as nice and 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 easy for you as possible. So it's. Uh, 
It can be something so simple as going to a coffee shop that makes it already more, more easy and enjoyable. And it also helps to add that element of accountability. So if you have a proofreader or a virtual assistant who does the, the, the visuals, it, it already helps you to, to stick to your routine because you have to deliver that material to someone in order to get started. But even though if you don't have that, I would also encourage you to, to get some inspiration from, from your audience because actually Actually, if um, that that can give you a lot of good ideas, so it becomes something that's actually motivating and inspirational because you already have all those good ideas. But the other thing that happens is that you'll be sure that your content is actually uh, answering their questions and addressing their pain points. Because what I often see also happening, especially in the beginning, is that when we are so close to to that our own own thing and we are in our own cocoon, it's so hard hard to or it's easy actually to to kind of get into writing writing about things that you think are important but your clients aren't necessarily there they need to maybe know something that's a little bit more basic you might have to elaborate ideas so it can also help you to have that outside look so asking feedback on social media and that also makes a great piece of content actually just ask feedback ask ideas ask what they are struggling with and as a, as, as a third thing, um, I would say that it's important also, especially if you're a small business owner and you're alone or you only have a part-time team, to do things that, that come easy for you and that you love. So if, for example, you love writing, have a blog. But if you don't like writing, but you are a natural speaker and interviewer, a podcast can be a good, good idea. Or if you are really a Canva wizard or InDesign wizard and can make those fantastic visuals maybe something along those those lines could could work for you because so often we hear these shoots and needs like i should have a blog well it depends it depends on your business it depends on your clients it depends on what you love doing and what comes easily for you and as, as last thing be realistic because so many many of us take on too much especially again in the beginning it's so easy to get caught up because there, there are endless opportunities and if you say tell yourself you should be on LinkedIn you should be on Facebook and you should have a Facebook group and a podcast and do like Facebook videos live it can can be a lot and often what we can realistically keep up with it's a lot more than we would like to do but it's better again to stick to that consistency and and repeat that key message of yours on those maybe one or two channels in the beginning and then take it from there and let, let yourself grow from there. Amazing advice. Keep it simple and easy. Link it to what you love and what you, 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 what you enjoy because as I said, that's, that's one of the things where you're going to have it. And build in that accountability. Use your team to, to give you that accountability too. Fantastic. It, I, I love those tips. They're so simple, but and you could almost apply that to anything in business because so often we we know what we want to say we know we want to do different things but actually doing it is is the hard part particularly when we have to do it for ourselves so my uh for most of my career i've, I've worked in marketing and communication so i've had to do a lot of writing over the years i've really refined that I used to train in how to be more effective with your um corporate communications but when it comes to writing for myself, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. It's like, oh, this is really difficult. But as you say, sometimes you're, you're just that little bit too close to the information. So having someone else or asking your audience to help give you that perspective can be, can be really great. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes asking for help, even it doesn't have to be a full-time team member. It can be just someone who helps you occasionally with some social media channels, with a blog or whatever it is. Sometimes just outsourcing one tiny piece of a process can already help you, help you get moving and uh, yeah, give you so much more, more time for our project as well. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to that point where you can get some help in whether it's a professional copywriter like yourself or just a, a VA that can just take part of it away. So I, I write my own blog post, but now I've got um, a, a marketing assistant who does the graphics, puts it all in place with the nice headings and all that kind of thing, which I could so easily do, but it's an extra hour or two's work. So exactly. having someone else who can do that for you is just, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it means that you can really focus on what's really important for your business and, and the needle movers. So Paulina, if people um, want to learn more about how to create their content and a, 
and a strategy, but perhaps they don't yet have the budget to have a dedicated resource like yourself. Is there any other options that you can recommend for them to do? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, first of all, uh, well, I have a, have a freebie with fr 10 free content ideas, with, which might be, might be helpful. And building that strategy and that content plan is often, often already saves, saves a lot of time um, there. Um, and, and of course, always, always developing your own content creation skills is something that, that takes you a, a step further. One, one step further, further on that process so that you can get that content created more quickly and more effortlessly. Mm. And did you have an online program? Yes, I also have an online program for beginning entrepreneurs to, to create their communication strategy. So that's a six week program. They, there, there is some one-to-one some -one time with me as well, but it's a group, group program that helps you to create that communication strategy. So to really zone into all those questions that you need to be very clear on before you can start creating that content efficiently yourself. So what is that message of yours? Who is your audience and where, where, how to reach them? What channels actually work for you? So you don't need to be everywhere and juggle all the balls at the same time. And then and towards the end, we also talk about content creation. Brilliant. And I think a lot of um, the success in building a strategy and a plan is just asking the right questions, but we don't always know what questions to ask or have a framework to help us answer them in a way that we can then use and, and make things easier for the next stage. So I can imagine that's really highly valuable. In fact, I know okay. it is because I have as a sneak peek behind the scenes. I'm giving you a little nudge there as well because I know you're very modest <laughs> in what's available but you've you know, really distilled your, your experience into that so I know it's, uh, it's a highly valuable program for people. And that freebie sounds amazing. So 10 ways to, to find... Yes, so uh, it's 10... 10 10 content ideas that work on every channel. So if you are in that phase where you don't really know what to write about or what to create content about, it gives you 10, 10 ideas that get you started immediately. So just pick one and start working on that. And, um, and already that clarity often, if you get that one thing done, it gives you that boost of confidence that gets you, gets you going and makes it a lot easier to continue on the next piece of content. Amazing. So that's nearly two weeks worth of content that you've already made it easier for them. And if you exactly. repeat that, that's more than a month. Awesome. <laughs> exactly. And you shouldn't forget, um, one of my favorite tips is often content batching. So don't work, work on one piece of content at a time, but do that one week or two weeks in one go and it'll already make it a lot more easier and quicker for you. Yeah, exactly. And then you can really get in the flow. Like we were just talking before we came live that uh, last week I had, I was just in the mood and had the flow and I had the ideas and, the, and everything ready. And I managed to write five blog posts in one morning, which I was, and I had a client meeting as well. So <laughs> I was really very impressed with my productivity then, but it, it helps to have this, the strategy there. I mean, I couldn't have written them completely by scratch, sitting down thinking, right, what am I going to do? Um, having that plan in place and, and some ideas already in the background really helped me to, to motor through those, which was felt great. <laughs> exactly. And that's just uh, how you make the flow possible. It will find you, the inspiration will find you, but you need to work a little bit to make yourself seen by, by him or her. Yeah, exactly. And that's so important these days is being seen because it, if you have a business, but people don't know you're there, they don't understand what you do and they don't understand why they need it then your business is not going to go anywhere. So understanding how to write copy, how to engage your audiences and how to be consistent with your content is so, so important. I think it's one of the most important skills for every entrepreneur to understand, even if they end up outsourcing that, understanding those skills first so that they can outsource in the best way and manage, oversee that strategy is, is really so important for building a, a successful business. Exactly. And all that content strategy, it should stem back to your business goals. And what is that really that bigger vision and mission of yours that you're, you're aiming to accomplish? Because just outsourcing, it can be a good help. But if it's done too early or without all that strategy behind, it can just become a big cost, actually. It doesn't necessarily bring the results. But when you're clear on your own goals and what you're trying to achieve as a business and then understanding how communication and content can help back that up, then it can really make make all the difference 
yeah i know that's that's great advice and i know there's advice that could say well type your keyword into google and it will give you some ideas and then you can take those and write an article around it or do the same on pinterest which is is great for getting blog ideas but if you write that and it doesn't link into where you're going with your business and your biggest strategy as you say then it's not going to help you. You've just exactly. kind of, you've given away value to your audience, which is great, but it might not even be the right audience that you've been engaging. So you've really effectively wasted your time and, and no entrepreneur has time to waste. That is something I know for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think, and we can all agree on that. Yeah. Paulina, you have shared so much amazing advice. Is there any last golden nugget or piece of advice you'd like to give uh, the audience either to do with copywriting or anything that you've experienced on your, your business journey? Well, this, this actually links maybe to both, both of those things, but um, especially when I started, I started, when I, like, as I mentioned, I started as a freelance journalist because that was what I know, knew how to do. And it led me to where I'm today with working with businesses and having the online program and all that. But I feel that it, I could have got here sooner if I had had a little bit more strategy in the beginning, a little bit more help in the beginning, because often you hear this advice that start where you are, which is a great advice because you have to start where you, where you are right now. It goes both for your business and, and for your content, but having a little bit of more clarity on direction and having a little bit more strategy of where are you going exactly can save you from a lot of unnecessary details. And I know it could have saved me from a lot of a lot of unnecessary detours and sometimes it can be hard to see that for yourself so getting help either it's a whether it's a business coach or a mentor or just an accountability buddy so somebody who just kicks your butt every once in a while and keeps you on track it can really make a big difference yeah i 100 percent agree and and that's really why i launched the dream clients blueprint uh program which is a semi-private business uh, coaching uh, experience was really to help women achieve that, to step back and have that perspective. Because so often I see women who have amazing skills, they get fantastic results for their clients, but they, they're not being consistent enough in their business. They're not confident yet in sharing their value in the right ways and, and showing up in their business in ways that attract the right clients. So once you have that clarity of vision as you were saying and knowing where you're going and what you're trying to achieve and who you want to work with and the difference you want to make to them then you can just start to design your your product suite your communication strategy everything around that and that's what's going to then really um, help you build your business faster and connect with more of the right people along the way as well and start working in ways that works for you as well it's all it all comes together it's like often that that missing piece of the puzzle is just taking that step back a bit like you were saying with the copy, take the step back and then you suddenly you can really start to see how everything com comes together and how it can best work for you. So that's amazing advice. Thanks, Paulina. So for anyone out there who is um, busy in their coffee shop <laughs> listening to this or out for a walk, how can they find you? I'll put your links below on the page, but if anyone hasn't got access to that right now, how, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Yes, so my uh, website is paulinarassi.com. So that is P A U L I I N A R A S I. There are two I's in Paulina, and there's also my blog with plenty of uh, plenty of tips on content strategy and content creation for small small but mighty businesses. I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm very active there, so I'm always happy to happy to connect if there are listeners who are active there as well. And uh, well, my online program is called Communication Boot. So it's probably easiest to find through my website, but I can also give you a link for that. So you can add it to that notes. Great. I'll add all those links below. Um, and I'm sure lots of people will be in touch with their questions very soon. Thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks, Paulina. Bye for now. Bye.